Hey there, today we'll be doing this question from our graph playlist of lead code card only that is 1926 nearest exit from entrance is in maze and the other videos from the following days day 5, 4 and the other days have already been uploaded please do check that out because uh, we do actually follow a similar pattern and graph questions so that will be helpful to you so please do check the other videos out so coming on to this question the question statement is you are given an m cross n matrix maze zero index with empty cells represented as a dot and walls represented as a plus you are also given the entrance of the maze where entrance is equals to entrance of a row and entrance of column denotes the row and column of the cell and you are initially standing at and we need to return the number of steps in the shortest path from the entrance to nearest exit or minus one if no such path exists so let's understand this question better right here with the diagram so you'll be understanding this right here so in the question they have said that they will give you some starting point okay they'll give you some starting point that will be given to you i'll just write the coordinates as well and the starting point from this is 2 comma 3 if it is a one beast indexed matrix fine so they'll give you the starting index this is where you're starting and these walls that you currently see right now they are represented as a plus in the matrix fine they are represented as a plus in the matrix in the question this is how it is given and all the white cell where you can move is represented as a dot fine and they have said wherever you are starting from you just need to move to the border areas that is this area right here these are the border areas right or the border uh, of the matrix so in any move that you can make can you reach the border areas of the matrix provided that all the plus have been marked as non-movable cell that means if you are right here at this cell you cannot move to right since this uh, since it is a maze that means you cannot move there okay and it will be represented as a plus in the question in the matrix fine so i hope the question statement is clear so far so let's understand how do we do it so you must have actually guessed that we'll be applying a simple bfs here and whatever the question is given us will try to follow those statements as well so what do we do in a bfs we try to move in all the four directions right as they have said you can actually move top down and left and right that is all the four directions but when you're moving you need to take care of one case that is is it a maze right you cannot move into a maze or let's just call this a wall okay which is represented as a plus let's just consider this as a wall you cannot move to a wall you can move in only the empty cells and the empty cells are represented as dot fine so these are the empty cells that will be there and whatever is white you can see those are all the empty cells so how many moves do you require in order to move to the border areas of this matrix so if you're starting here you can see if you just move upwards you can actually go on to a border cell that is there and that is only in one move fine or the other thing that you can do is move once to the left again to the left that is you use two moves in order to reach a border cell that is this one but they have said in the question that you need to return the minimum number of moves so what will be your optimal move in order to reach a border element or a border cell that will be one so you'll be taking one unit of time or one distance in order to reach that or one step whatever you like to call it fine but they have also said that this condition can never happen you must be thinking what if we are starting here right what if we are starting here then what can be done because i'm already in the entrance right and i'm already in the border cell so they have said the border cell and if the entrance is same that will not be considered as an answer that means you actually need to 
move on to another cell in the border area let's understand this better so right here i'll just draw another matrix and something like this we have this matrix right here and the plus are represented as like this and if you are let's just see here right here you're starting from here you're already in a border cell right and you can actually move let's just make this interesting and let's just write it here you're starting from here and these are all the red areas that you cannot go to that is all the walls that you cannot go to and all the white cells that are marked as dot are movable and where are you starting from you're starting from this cell right here so what can you do can you move to the right obviously not because it's a maze or a wall you can move to up but it is out of bounds you cannot move you can move to the bottom yes you can since it is a movable cell you can move on to that so number of steps that you have taken is what one right now now again you can move to the right or to the left but left is not permissible since it is a wall or a maze so you'll move to the right and the number of steps will be taken will be one more so you'll reach to a border cell in two units of time or two steps so this is the whole part of the explanation and how do we do this let's see that part so as i said we'll just do a simple bfs right a simple bfs will suffice in this case why so because we'll be moving level wise and you'll be finding the nearest path to the border areas in the best shortest time so whenever you get this shortest type uh, shortest time or shortest path question we generally use bfs okay this is a common type that we use so that is why we are using bfs bfs here sorry and why not dfs because let's just see if you have a very big array okay very big large array in dfs what do we do we try out every possible path so then it will TLE obviously so that is why we are using bfs let's understand this code now so I've written a boundary check function this is a typical boundary check function that i write in every code of graph till now to check that are we in the boundary or not are we in the matrix or not okay so coming on to this part we can use a visited array obviously but here i've made the change in the given array that was provided to us in the question itself fine so i'll just pick this up right here and i'll just show you what am i trying to tell you I just erase this part and we just move on to the diagram that was given to us <coughs> sorry about that so as we see we were starting from here right we could move to the left to the right or to the bottom i'm saying that i'll mark in the given array that was itself fine so if i'm right here i'll say okay i'll mark this cell as visited that means i've already visited this cell right here fine and what can we mark it as i can say that i'll mark it as something other than something uh this dot it could be a plus or ampersand whatever you like okay any character other than the dot i've marked this cell as visited i've said that okay i've already visited this cell now i'll try to go right try to go up i see that the upper uh, cell is actually a better one and we can actually move on to and it is actually the best why because we get a boundary cell and we try to go here we mark this as visited if it is the case otherwise we just return since it is the best case for us that is it is a boundary cell we just return this steps okay so what have i done i just created a queue which we do in the bfs part pushed it into the queue the entrance cell which is given to us in the question that is where we are starting from and I've marked it as visited. That means right now, wherever I am, I'll be jumping onto the left, right, or the top of the bottom, right? So I marked it as visited right now, where I'm starting from. So this is marked as visited right now. And I've declared a steps variable, which will be maintaining the steps or the number of jumps that I'm making in order to reach the boundary element. And at the end of the day, if I cannot, I'll be returning a minus one. So let's understand this BFS function or the BFS code that we have written here. 
is a typical BFS uh, code we are writing since day one of this playlist. You should be familiar with it right now. So we just go into the BFS. We uh, go for all the values that are in the queue, iterate, and we go in all the four directions that are possible. And the new coordinates are written as new i and new j. That is, this is our new ith coordinate and the new jth column coordinate. And this is the directions that we are using in uh, array that we have used. And this is a typical way to write or to move in all the four directions. If not, if you do not know this part, please do check out the other videos. I have explained why do we uh, use this. Okay. And if you are familiar with it, well and good. You are good to go for that. So coming on to this if part, what does this do? This is just checking the boundary elements, right? We cannot just go out of the bounds like let's just say if you're starting from here you can't just jump out of the matrix right that is an invalid move so that is the boundary part that we are checking that is it a valid cell that we are jumping on to now we see that uh, coming on to this diagram it will be better for you to understand we were right here we made a move to the up cell upper cell and to the left cell right simultaneously since it is a bfs you see that this cell was marked as a dot and also it was a boundary cell. Why dot? Because it is obviously mentioned in the question that is why this is a movable cell. We can move on to that cell and it is a boundary cell. That is what we are checking in this question, uh, this step. That is if it is a boundary cell and we can move there. If it is possible, what do we do? We just return the number of steps that we took in order to reach that. Fine. And what is this long thing that I've written here? We are just simply checking all the boundary cases. That means we could be in the first row. We could be in the first row. That is right here. We could be in the last row. That is R minus 1. We could be in the first column. That is 0th column or the last column. That is C minus 1. That is what we have written. If it is possible, we just return the number of steps but if not then we move to where to the left right up and down wherever it is possible and if we can move so when will this case arise so let's just say this was also a maze this was also a wall right the upper part is only the wall uh, let's just draw it like this the upper part is wall so where will you move we'll just move to the left right you can only move to the left when you move to the left what happens you insert this value into the queue right because you have moved from here to here now what will happen you will move from here to the leftmost part again right so that is why i've checked if i can move on to that cell what will i do i'll just push that value into our queue and mark that as visited this part is very important otherwise you'll be getting a tle for sure so uh, why am I telling that? Because I made this mistake while I was submitting it. I forgot to mark it as visited. Okay. So don't forget this part. So this part is very important. You, Whenever you're moving from one cell to the other, you just make sure that you are marking it as visited. And in all the graph question, we do need to check care of. We, didn't, uh, we obviously need to take care of this part that everything where we are traveling on to, if required, mark it as visited. Fine. And at the end of the day, if we do not find any cell, we just return a minus one. And this is it for this whole code part and the whole code walkthrough and the code link will be in the description as well and if you have learned something from this video and if you are enjoying this series please do check the other videos out as well and please do like and subscribe